Right. Well, uh, thank you very much, um, and uh, for for this for this invitation to m make commentary on on Elizabeth Pavanelli's uh, presentation. I I'm really thrilled to to be doing this. Although I think it's way over my head. I'm 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 not a I'm not a, a philosopher, and therefore I, I'm certain I'm going to do violence to some of her ideas. I think. Rather than, rather than try to make some smart commentary on, on what she just said, I'm going to try to translate some of that for people who are not familiar with her, with her work. Because I think um, there, there is a, there's a lot of very complicated and important thinking behind some of the concepts that she presents to us. So there, there are several things here at, at, at play. Um, I mean, there are various ways to approach uh, uh, Pavanelli's um, arguments. Uh, one of them is to, to be very clear about what she means when she's talking about biopolitics. Uh, for her, politics is not the normal. Politics is not the normal state of things. Politics is something that happens when there are disruptions. And in her argument, it's very important to understand that dis disruptions are a necessary aspect of, um, of, of, of uh, achieving something different, of, of reaching um, different horizons from the status quo. This is where her concept of geontology comes in. Geontology is not a, a mode of knowing. Uh, it's not another uh, epistemology. It's not simply another... Uh, way of understanding the world, but it's actually a, a way of being. Uh, it's, it's a radically different way of relating to what's around us. Um, I think she's quite clear in the video in terms of uh, the, the, the difference that is introduced currently, what she calls the carbon imaginary, um, which is the sort of the basis for how we relate to the world in this late liberal uh, uh, period, it is based on differentiating between what is alive and what is not alive. Uh, this is quite clear. And this determines what can be and what cannot be in the world. And therefore, it's a way of governing. This is, this is what she means by biopolitics. For me, this is very important because it comes to the heart of cross-cultural knowledge exchange, which is what my uh, own presentation will be about in, in, in a few minutes. Um, and it's not about recognition. It's not about including indigenous voices. It's not about allowing indigenous and marginalized voices to come into the conversation. Uh, it's about those voices. It's about those communities, those people. Um, forcing their own change on, on the existing situation, not asking for permission to sit at the table and have a proper negotiation with a mining company, for example, but to present their side of an argument within a political sphere of conflict and negotiation. What, it, what is at stake here is a disruption of the, uh, of, of the current state of things. This is what she means when she talks about there is an emerging form we're not quite sure what the new form our world will take is, is going to be like, but we know that, that it's happening. Um, and I find this very, very uh, provocative and very motivation, motivating because uh, currently, I'm, from my own perspective, I'm seeing uh, how the, the whole issue of including indigenous knowledge in climate policy making, how that is working, and, and I don't see it working very well, quite frankly, um, because in the end, the conditions for, um, for governing and for uh, administrating the state of our planet are still being uh, dictated by one side and not, and not by both. There's a, there's a, an anecdote that comes to mind here from my, my work in Melanesia, um, there, there's often talk of land disputes in Melanesia um, and how people are, are constantly 
discussing and, and arguing and even going to violence over, over land. Um, and so the, the solution from the point of view of international and national uh, bodies is to establish land title and catastral surveys and to have everybody become a proper citizen within a government of landholders and landowners and property rights. Um, but this is to miss the point that land disputes are a necessary part of how people come together and work their problems out. And, and, and in order to do that, they, there have to be no boundaries between different land claims. There has to be a constant negotiation between sides. This is how things work. Um, and that, to me, is a, is a glimpse of a different way of approaching um, land rights and exploitation and extraction. Uh, it's a glimpse of, of what uh, uh, Pavanili is talking about in her video. I mean, there are many ways to approach this. There's the whole issue of life and non-life, which is this division set up by the current carbon imaginary. There's, um, uh, there's the issue of meteorology now playing a part when previously it, it, it wasn't a, a relevant uh, a part of how we look at the world. Um, I think I could go on and on, but I would, but I would draw attention to one, to one issue when she brings in the Australian Aboriginal experience. Um, she's talking about new forms of life in ways that can be very confusing, or, or, new, or new modes of being in ways that can be confusing. But her attention is on affect, on, on, on what uh, effects things have on each other because her her concentration is on things existing through an effort of mutual attention. This is for her uh, the crucial issue when she says things are neither born nor die, we can't keep thinking about life and non-life. Things are either in a state of mutual attention to each other or they can turn away from each other. They can withdraw care from each other. And in her view, it's the earth that is withdrawing its care from us, and we're gonna be left alone in a desert unless we pay attention to that and begin to change how we relate to uh, everything else around us. I mean, there's a, I have six pages of notes here from previous and current uh, viewings of this uh, video, but I think I'm going to leave it here. I guess I, I would just say this is the, the beginning of her answer to what is gonna happen, what is to come. In, her, in Pavanelli's view, it's all over. <laughs> We don't realize it, but the world's over. <laughs> the world we knew is finished. It's up to us to begin to recognize how to reformulate our ways of being and, our, um, and the ways we think of what is self and other and, and how it's all going to work itself out.